saw a really interesting video on Criminali's channel. I guess I'm doing a reaction to it, or I don't know if there's another term that's more appropriate. Kind of a cosign. It's his uh, video about why and how I'm giving up my Kindle. He's, for some reason, when I go to his channel, I always end up watching his device reviews. He did a good one a few weeks ago, which I, I hope I remember to link to um, in the description, called The Books Palma, which is like $300, but the more I'm thinking about it, the more I would really like it, because I have a lot of issues with my Kindle. I think it'd be worth it to me, considering how much electronic reading I do, and um, how frugal I am most of the time anyway, I think it'd be uh, really worthwhile for me. I can't buy one here. But when I move on from Albania, I think I'll be going to Spain or Portugal in the fall. I could probably figure out how to get one there. And maybe not, who knows, by then this will all be moot. But before I started traveling a year ago, I really didn't use my e-reader very much at all, even though I've had it about 10 years. I would just use it on vacation now and then. And I was pretty much done with it before. You know, it is a great invention for uh, convenience and for traveling. And I don't know what my reading life would be like without it now. When I traveled when I was younger, you'd find, you know, people trade paperbacks back and forth more. There's really not a lot of places out here in the smaller towns in Albania to buy books. I, I, there, I know there's some great bookstores in Tirania, the main city where I'll be in a couple months, and I'm, I hope to do some exploring there. And, you know, you get very uh, spoiled by having the convenience of the, of the Kindle, but some of the things that he mentioned in the in his video, which you should definitely watch if you're interested in the subject at all, do bother me too. Just the setup of Amazon and the way they kind of control everything. Uh, I feel like I don't want to go too far down in the weeds with this, but I feel like they do a pretty good job of promoting indie authors, but also exploiting them. And what I mean by that is if you if you search, if you go search for something like, I don't know, Jack Reacher, you're going to get a ton of response on Amazon. You'll get a ton of responses that say sponsored, sponsored, sponsored. And they're, they're going to be paid ads. Many times they're paid by people who are just trying to break in. Um, a lot of people end up Spent, you know, they give great royalties on Amazon for two indie authors. Uh, but a lot of people end up spending all that money trying to get their book noticed because Amazon also markets a lot of their advertising programs to indie authors. And when I'm saying indie, of course, I mean self published, uh, depending on how you want to define that. Um, you know, and of course, there's a lot of people trying to get their work out there in front of people. It's very competitive. A lot of it is garbage. A lot of it is great. A lot of it is just strange. Meaning it doesn't fit into categories um, that legacy publishing, that mainstream publishing has decided are the selling categories and use all the time. You see, uh, like, new strange subcategories that are created out of by indie authors like the billionaire romance subgenre and all these things you know romance sells very very well on on for indies because uh, romance readers are buy a lot of books and read a lot of books it's a huge market and they just go through them and to have something that's less expensive than the legacy publishing versions and and you can just get a lot of it is a big value um but i do feel kind of trapped by kindle sometimes you know i do uh, read a lot of stuff off of gutenberg i do have other apps I can use on my phone. I'm looking for the Kindle app now so I can show you something. Uh, 
Uh, but like he's talking about in his video, you know, most of the stuff you see on your own app, that's my home page. These up here are books I own. This book, for example, is no longer available there. If you go to the site, uh, if you go to the Amazon page, whoever published it took it down or it got taken out or something. Everything else is stuff they're promoting to me, which some of it might be good, but upcoming releases for you, you know, just tons and tons of stuff that I never look at. And I actually didn't even, I even started tuning it out until I saw Criminali's video. Same thing here. All the second half of this page and all the way down is stuff I don't own. Just all marketing material. I But I hardly ever go to this. This is the homepage of, of the thing. I usually just stay on my library page. And when I get on the homepage, I'm like, well, what is this crap for? Um, it's also, I find these Kindles very hard to search. They're very slow. Uh, you know, I'll do a search. I did this one just for Conan the Barbarian. Uh, just to show, you know, all the results. You know, I only have one Conan. I only have one book that qualifies there, I guess. Everything else is from the store. You know, results from Goodreads. Oh my God! And you just cannot get this Goodreads stuff off of there. And I hate Goodreads. It just it's just spam, as far as I'm concerned. And you know, scrolling through here, it just takes forever. And the covers take a long time to to um, load and all that. And when I started doing this channel, I was. putting uh, Amazon affiliate links in. I'd, I'd write, uh, I'd talk about a book or a few books and I would put affiliate links to the Amazon page in the in the description. I stopped doing that after four or five videos because I really didn't, wasn't really comfortable trying to sell stuff, I guess. And also I figured, you know, people know where to get books. It really only helps me, serves me to try and get my affiliate link out there. So I don't do affiliate links and I also don't link to Amazon that much because I don't want to really support any one store or anything. So I'm thinking about getting this Books Palma and trying that out. I would like to have more physical books. There's a big movement on in the world right now and I think it's very valid about physical media, you know, because we're, we're in the situation now where people you know, it's, it's more of a big deal for, for movie fans and, and that, you know, they'll buy stuff on Apple or they'll buy it on Amazon Prime. And then they'll find two years later that it's not available anymore. And they're like, wait, well, I thought I bought it. So they're really just giving you two levels of rental on a, a lot of these sites. They're like, yeah, you own it as long as we decide to can you own it and then we're going to take it away at some point or you can rent it for three days you know you can rent a movie for 9.99 for three days or you can or you can buy it forever for 12.99 and and then when it's gone it's it's gone and it's too bad so there's big movement on physical media but you know for people like me who are minimalists and travel around a lot and move around a lot that's not really an option so I'm not really a book collector at this point. I have a lot of stuff on my Kindle. Criminali's video made me feel good because he has like 1,800 unread things. I only have 900. I'm doing so much better. So I thought that was, you know, that's an insane amount. Um, some of it is free stuff. I went through and cleaned a bunch of stuff out where I downloaded multiple free copies, different editions of different classics and things like that. But we have... Project Gutenberg, we have library books, which are kind of linked to the Kindle. That's another issue, is the libraries that I work with, that, that I borrow from, that I'm a member of, have, uh, sometimes they have stuff, they, they have an option where you can read it in the Libby app, which is terrible for reading. Or, or you can download it for Kindle and then you can read it on your device. And if I got like a Books Palmer or something, 
I can still do that, but I'd be using the Kindle app. So they kind of have, you know, Kindle, uh, Amazon has such a stranglehold on things, which gets irritating because we really should have like a, a more diverse uh, uh, book culture. And, you know, they decide there was a video. I'm going to see if I can find it. There was a guy and I really don't know about this guy's story. People can say whatever they want online. Seems reasonable. Uh, this, there's a guy on here who... Um, he, he was banned permanently f from posting on Amazon. And he was almost banned from posting books on Google. What had happened is he wrote, he originally wrote his books in, I believe it was Dutch or Danish. I apologize for getting those confused. And he wrote, and so he published two books like that. And then he published his first book in English, which was a translation. Then he changed his last name because it was similar to a different, uh, to a classic author. His real name is Hans, Hans Christian Andersen, so he thought that's really not very good marketing because people are going to get confused, so he changed it. He started using his uh, mother's maiden name as his last name. You know, and so a couple of years go by and he decides to reissue this English language book. And can't find his old account, doesn't think it's a big deal, can't find his old Amazon account, creates a new account, uploads this book, which is identical to his own book, which he wrote and he owns, and he has all the rights to. It just has a different last name, same title, same book. Then they send him a notice saying they're closing his account, and they won't respond. And this has happened to people I know, this has happened to friends of mine, and it's happened to people I've seen on forums and stuff where there's no debate with Amazon. If they decide you're a pirate or you've done something that breaks their, their rules, which are very selectively and arbitrarily engaged, and of course, you know, after they closed his the account, they kept all his royalties too. They didn't pay him anything. Um, you know, and hopefully maybe he'll get some traction from his video and he'll get some attention. Google did the same thing, but they gave, but they had an appeal process. Google Books did. So they're like, this book doesn't appear. You know, they wrote him back and they said, it appears you have two accounts. Would you like to merge them? And which one do you want to use? You know, sort of like more humanistic, more humane. Um, but Amazon being such a massive, massive concern with tons of fraud and, you know, hundreds of thousands of AI books being posted all the time and just really badly written books and people legit, legitimately getting their their books pirated and then <coughs> posted by some sleazy fly-by-night person as a new book. And, uh, you know, ironically, of course, a lot of those people get away with that crap for a long time. And sometimes the wrong person gets blamed or, or gets abused. But this is the problem of having a monopoly on something like free expression, which Amazon has very close to doing on books. For example, the Kindle uh, Unlimited program, which you could pay, I think it's like $13 a month now which some people have, and I've had it before, and it's very, very useful. If you're an indie author, an indie fiction author, self-published author, they really force you into that program in a couple ways. One way is that they will not allow you into the program unless your book is exclusive to Amazon, so they're cutting everyone else out which you think, fine, I won't be part of that program. I won't get those uh, unlimited readers. They'll just, I'll just price my book low and people will have to buy it and then the people who buy it will enjoy it. But you're not going to get the placement or the, or the promotion as an indie writer if you don't agree to be in the Kindle Unlimited program. So you're free to have your book buried completely among all the other thousands and thousands of books and then you can go what they call going do what they call going wide, which is posted on, uh, you know, the um, Smashwords uh, draft to digital platform where they distribute to a lot of other 
things or you can go individually and post it to Barnes and Noble yourself, post it to Google Books yourself, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you're free to do that, but everybody's books are on Amazon. People, everybody buys their books from Amazon. So I feel like I'm contributing that to that too, unfortunately, because I really don't follow Amazon. They're just trying to destroy uh, competition. They're tr trying to do what capitalism does which is crush the uh, the competition and they, they've done a very good job of it but you know so it's like they make it so easy as Corinne always said to you know upload your even your independent books you can download your books on Gutenberg and just email them straight to your device you know a lot of the Gutenberg books are just available on Kindle so it is a little more inconvenient not to use Amazon but I'm thinking about it too because I do get tired of, of Amazon just saying you know um, you can have any ebook you want as long as we show it to you you know I mean it's just it's just the way things have gone because if you look at uh, you know bookstore you can go to any bookstore you want and it's the old, the old issue of chains versus independent bookstores and that. And of course you try and use independent bookstores and then the chains come out and they're like three books less for the books. And then Amazon comes out and they can't undercut the uh, bookstores and then the chains disappeared and blah, blah, blah. And now the independent bookstores are back because people really miss that experience. So I guess that's where I land on it. I do miss the experience of having like a wider range of options you know, it's called the everything store for a reason, and that's super convenient, but maybe I don't want there just to be one store. So I'm thinking about it. I really don't have any conclusions yet. You know, I'm kind of locked in right now to the Amazon platform. I don't really spend much money there because of things like Criminality's uh, wonderfully inventive challenge, the Read What Your Own Challenge which I'm in the middle of, and that's preventing me, that's helping prevent uh, me from dropping a lot of money on Amazon. And plus, I am very cheap, and I do keep tight reins on my money. You know, there's a service, and I'm sure if you listen to podcasts, you've heard about this service. can't think of the name of it now. Where you actually pay this company. It's a subscription service. You download their app, and you pay them to cancel your subscriptions like there are people out there with who have so many Netflix subscriptions and and uh, you know different streaming platforms and Kindle Unlimited and just so many monthly charges they don't even know what they're paying for and <laughs> you can actually make money canceling that stuff for people I am always canceling stuff I'm very cheap. I think about every dollar. I just canceled somebody's Patreon that was a dollar a month because they haven't posted in three months. I'm like, it's ridiculous, you know, and I think the person who's doing that is just hoping that people forget that they, you know, I was just hoping they're like, and it, it, in a way it makes me mad that people do that kind of thing, that they don't give good service for monthly fees that and if you're watching this and you're and I'm a member of your Patreon, that means I like your Patreon. Um, but I think some people are just like, I'll do a Patreon, and then I'll just forget. hopefully everybody will forget about it, and I'll get a few hundred bucks a month for doing nothing. Um, or you have these celebrities with their Patreons that are, uh, where I guess you're just paying them to be themselves, like Jordan Peterson's pa Patreon. But are you just paying Jordan Peterson to be Jordan Peterson? You know, he has jobs, he sells books, he, uh, you know, appears on people's podcasts. You're just paying him to own the libs on Twitter or something? I, I don't, I don't understand, you know, that some uh, political figures used to do that with their super PACs. They'd have a super PAC, and then you find out they're just living on the money on the super PAC, and it's just... Uh, people want to give them money to be like a a thorn in the side of the opposition or something 
I don't know, I'm getting off track now, so I'll stop now. But uh, that's, those are some thoughts I have about the Amazon uh, space and Kindle space, and I hope to kind of resolve it at some point. In the meantime, I've got tons of stuff stuff that I've already paid for that I'm, gonna, that I'm going to read and finish as long as they allow me to keep it on my Kindle. 